in this lecture we will starting with the unit 3 which is a conversion of function so till now what you have studied is a conversion of a sequence so here it is actually a conversion of sequence of functions i can say but it is see so let's have an an example For example, if I give you the sequence one by two power n, so what you can say about this sequence, whether it is a conversion sequence or it is a diversion sequence, as you know, this will tends to zero as n tends to infinity because this one by two it is less than one. If I have given the sequence one raised to n, and this will converge to one. as n tends to infinity if i have 2 raised to n then this will converge to the infinity that means it is a diversion sequence as n tends to infinity and if you can looking at this all this pattern it is of the form x power n type and you know that the sequence x power n it tends to zero if your x is between Zero to one, or I can say it is between minus one to one. If I can write down precisely, it is between minus one to one. Then x power n will tends to zero, and it will tends to infinity if your x is greater than one, or x is less than minus one, and it will tends to one. If x is equal to one, for minus one again it will be an alternating series sequence. So with this idea, it leads to that this is a function of x. I can say it is a function f of x is equal to x power n. So since it is also depends on n, I may write as this is f n. Okay, so it is a sequence of function you have, and this sequence of function. So in that manner, you can have lots of sequence of function you can construct. For example, sine nx. That means the sequence of the type sine x, sine two x, sine three x, and so on. If you choose your value of the function accordingly. Can you say this series is convergent or divergent? The same question I can ask for any type of sequence. So this is a examples of sequence of a function. When you have a sequence of a function, the interesting question is to be asked whether this sequence of function is convergent or it is a divergent. Now here I can see that. if i take this point in the different domain that means in this domain if i take between minus 1 to 1 it will be convergent if i have taken the domain will be greater than 1 then it will be divergent okay so whenever such things is there then it is interested to see in which domain it will be convergent so that's why that is a definition and it is a point by point if you choose take on your point that is 1 by 2 then it will converge if i take on a point 1 then it is convergent if i take the point 2 then it is infinity so it is the conversion point by point so that's why there is a definition called point wise conversion and this definitions gives you a point by point whether the given sequence of function is convergent or not so the sequence fn this is a sequence of function n running from 1 to infinity or be a sequence of functions 
define each of them each define on the set e where e for our case we are considering this e as a subset of r but you can take it any you can generalize this concept for any arbitrary set e and on that set you have to define what is the metric on it and in that way you can generalize this definition but as per your syllabus or as per the things we are taking this sequence of function is also a real valued function so it is a sequence of real valued function so we are taking a real valued function which defines on a real line or it is a sub or defines on a subset of a real line so our we are restricting our self to a real numbers or you can extend if you want to extend you can extend to by a complex number also now suppose you want to say that this sequence of numbers that is fn of x because now i am putting the n x here so it is the value of this function at the point so that's why i'm saying it is a sequence of number for example for the x raised to n then if i put x is equal to 1 by 2 then it is a sequence of numbers x is equal to 1 then it is a sequence of number x is equal to 2 it is a sequence of number and according to this each and every time so every x for every x it it is convergent converges for each x in e then one can define a new function f by f of x is equal to limit of fn of x so you will define a new function whatever the function will converge to this for example here that function is this fx here this is your fx which having this property 0 infinity 1 if it is dep depends on this so here if each of if each of this point is converging this number of sequence of numbers fn of x is converged then we can define a new function and the, we are defining as what are the limit of this each and of fn of x for every x in such case we say that it converges to this fn of x the fn converges to f on e or fn converges point wise to f on e and so this is the definition of point wise convergence so this is the so point wise convergence means for every x this fn of x will converge and in that case this f it's called the limit of the sequence we call the function f is the limit of the function a sequence of function f so this is the definition of a point wise convergence and a limit of a sequence for example for example you can have this consider the sequence of 
functions fn of x is equal to x power n where n is equal to 1 2 up to so on for every x is in closed interval 0 if i have e which is closed interval 0 okay and we note that if your x is between we note that if your x is between this two that is in between 0 and 1 where 0 is also included then we know that the limit of n tends to infinity x power n is 0 if x is equal to 1 then we know that the limit of n tends to infinity x power n which is 1 raised to n 1 raised to n is 1 so this is 1 so therefore what we can say a limit of n tends to infinity fn of x is this function 0 if it is between this one and 1 if it is x is equal to 1 so in that manner we can have this is the definition or this is the function here I want to establish one thing that this fn is continuous because it is a function x power n it is a continuous function because we can see that the first sequence is x this is x square x cube so it is a sequence of polynomial and this sequence of polynomials is continuous each and every fn is continuous but its limit which we have on this side it will not be a continuous why it is happening that is an interesting question to search out or one can ask this question so with regards to that let us go by epsilon delta definition of this we know that the definition of a limit says that for every epsilon greater than 0 there exists n0 belongs to n such that mode of fn of x minus fx is less than epsilon for every n greater than or equal to g. this is the way to write down this definition into the epsilon definition for every epsilon greater than 0 this is the same as the sequence and for x belongs to e this says the same thing now let us look at it, this so what i will do is i let us take this any point x which is in this interval the interval open interval 0 1 No, I will take this closed interval 0 1 because that is the domain of the function. So let us find m which is this n0 corresponding any given epsilon greater than 0 for any given epsilon greater than 0 we have to find out n0 such that mode of fn of x minus fx which is x power n minus 0 yeah if i take this one is open interval 0 1 then it is we know that it is in open interval this will converge to 0 ok it is 1 then it will converge to 1 this is I want that it has to be less than epsilon for every n greater than or equal to n m that we have taken here we have to calculate what is this value of m and for 
our calculation that means from this we can easily find out that what should be this m so what we have it is x power n is mode of x power n is less than epsilon i'm not writing mode here due to this x is between 0 and 1 this is already given so x is already non negative so x power n is less than epsilon if i take the log then it is log epsilon and this is n is less than log epsilon upon log x so this should be your what, what i want is n is less than or equal to m so for that and also there is a problem of uh, so this is n so this is 1 upon n so this will i can write down n is greater than log of 1 upon epsilon upon log of 1 upon x this will gives you this if i take the reciprocal and then doing this log of 1 minus log epsilon and that minus minus sign is adjust so for this i am taking or taking your n is greater than this log of 1 by epsilon to log of 1 upon x and one can note here this m let take m be an integer next to greater than this so i can say it is a box function log of whatever the integer next to this that we will take or box function and one can note that this m is depends on epsilon as well as x so that we should write here thus m is depends on not only on epsilon but also on x to indicate this we denote m by a function of x and epsilon so this is our notation for denoting this what will happen if it is x is very close to 1 thus when x is very close to 1 that means if it is x is very close to 1 this means log of 1 is there Okay. and in that case the denominator is very small because it is tending to zero log of 1 is tending to zero so if this denominator is tending to zero this m is going to very large so that we can write if it is x is very close to 1 we have to choose your m x epsilon very large let us choose epsilon is 1 by 2 and let us find the value of m x epsilon okay so when x is 1 by 4 and x is 3 by 4 let us take this to a different value now as per the argument log of 1 upon epsilon upon log of 1 by x if i substitute this value this is log 2 upon log 4 and uh, log 2 upon log 4 gives you the value 1 by 2 because this is log 2 upon log of 2 power 2 and that log of 
a raised to b will be b log a. So that's why it is log 2 into log 2, and this is a cancel out. So this is 1 by 2. So the nearest integer to 1 by 2 is 1. So hence, in this case, mx epsilon is 1. And if your x is 3 by 2, sorry, 3 by 4, but when x is this, 3 by 4, that is, this value gives you, that is log 2 upon log 4 by 3. And if we can calculate this is by calculator, you can have this value, that is 2.409. If we check using the calculator this value log 2 upon log 4 by 3 and hence in this case the next nearest integer will be p so if you have taken your value of x is 1 by 4 and if your value of x is 3 by 4 then you will have a different value of m that conclude that this m which we have taken is a function of x as well as epsilon. So now what we will show, see which we, what we have found is this epsilon, this m, it may possible another m which is depends only on epsilon, it may possible, what is possible is here we have found this is as a this a box of this value as epsilon that is the next next greatest integer as this value open but it may possible that there will be another m in such way that that m is only depends on epsilon it may possible that it will not depends on x so what we will show is there is no m in n which depends on only on epsilon okay so whatever the m you choose now we will show that we show that there is no m belongs to n only depend on epsilon such that mode of fn of x minus fx is in epsilon for every x it is in this interval so let us take this epsilon will be 1 by 2 okay if the, so here we have to find out no such m so let us take there is such m if there is a m which hold good for every x belongs to closed interval 0 1 then we have this x power n minus 0 because fx is 0 here which will be less than 1 by 2 for every n greater than or equal to m and for every n is sorry for every x belongs to this but this is x power m is less than 1 by 2 this is for m is also satisfying this so this is say c and it is true for any x between this and taking the left hand limit here taking the left and limit at x is equal to 1 we get if I take the limit both sides then we know that as x tending to 1 this will be 1 this side is 1 which is less than 1 by 2 if you are taken your epsilon is 1 by 2 then you will come to the contradiction which is a contradiction why we have taken this contradiction because we have taken this m m is only depends on 
epsilon. If, if it is not depends on epsilon, then we cannot say that this is independent of x. So hence, what we can say is there is no m in m depend only on epsilon such that mode of fn of x minus fx is less than 1 by 2 for every n greater than or equal to m and for every x belongs to this. So hence this m has to be depends on x as well as epsilon. So however though we conclude that there are example so in this example it depends on m is depends on epsilon as well as x so and but there are examples in which this m depend only on epsilon so there are some examples in which it is depends on x and epsilon that we have taken this example x raised to n in that your m is this and we also that there is no such m which is only depends on epsilon but there are example in which the epsilon is only depends on sorry m is only depends on epsilon let us take such example so let's consider or define fn which is defined over close interval 0 to infinity to r as fn of x is equal to x upon 1 plus nx for every x is between this now first question is to calculate what will be the limit of this function and then we have to find out what is the value of m so uh, now here we note this limit of n tends to infinity fn of x so for any x is between this we will have this is n x upon 1 plus n x and if i divide this numerator and denominator by n then this i can write down it is x by n upon 1 by n plus x so this will gives you a 0 by x if x is not equal to 0 if x because x is there so that's why i may rewrite in this is strictly greater than 0 so if x is not equal to 0 then we have this is 0 by x because this is 1 upon n which tends to 0 and this is also tends to 0 so it is 0 by x so this is the answer is 0 so the limit of this function if your x is between 0 to infinity it is 0 and if x is 0 then we know that fn of x is already 0 because it is x upon 1 plus n x so in that case fn of x is 0 if x is 0 so in that case this will tends to 0 so in general we can say that therefore a limit of n tends to infinity fn of x is 0 that we have proved but our objective is to find out what will be the n0 as per the epsilon definition so what we will show now we shall so this is by epsilon definition we shall show that for any for given epsilon greater than 0 
there exists m belongs to n such that mode of fn of x minus f is less than epsilon for every n it is not equal to m here this is true for any x which is in between this interval so for any x and for every x it is in this interval we are our objective is to find out this n because there exist n so now i will start with this considering fn of x minus f fn we already have as a definition it is x upon 1 plus nx and as per this this is the limit of the function which is zero so that is fx is zero so this is for any x is belongs to closed interval zero to infinity we can write this so that is equal to i can say it is mode of 1 plus nx that is less than i can write down it is x upon 1 upon n because 1 plus nx is always bigger than nx and if we take the reciprocal we can have nx plus 1 is less than 1 upon nx that we can write this is always true because we are adding one into this so this quantity is always smaller this quantity is always smaller than this and if we take the reciprocal we have this if we take a modulus then also no problem because x is positive so that is no problem now x is cancel out provided if x is not equal to zero. this is we can write only if x is not equal to zero. if it is zero it is a zero function so there is no problem with it so therefore this is equal to 1 upon n and can take this is as 1 upon m and that is less than epsilon so i will choose a value of m which is having this so and this is true for m is greater than 1 upon epsilon so this will gives you the value of m. so what is your m is a next integer to this 1 upon epsilon so for given epsilon greater than 0 there exists m that you can take it as box 1 upon m which is the next integer to 1 upon epsilon then mode of fn fx minus fx is less than epsilon for every n greater than or equal to m and for every n sorry for every x which is closed interval 0 to infinity for 0 it is also having the same thing if x is 0 then it is 0 minus 0 so that whatever the n zero you can choose you can have this. so in this case ultimately what is our objective in this case your epsilon is depends only on sorry your m is depends on only on epsilon it is not depends on x that you can see okay and also one more things you can see that the limit of this function which is a zero function which is a constant function zero and it is continuous each of fn is continuous that you can see it is x upon 1 plus nx so it is continuous except it is minus 1 by 2 but it is not in the domain because it is a polynomial upon polynomial form so it is a rational function and we know that a rational functions are continuous if the denominator term is non zero here the denominator is non zero at minus 1 by n otherwise all of the term is non zero if x is minus 1 by n then it is zero on that point the function is not continuous if even though it is not defined but that is not in the domain of itself so there is no problem with the continuity of this function fn of x so each of fn of x are continuous and limit is also continuous and we can observe that on that this will depends only on x but in the above function that is x power n function what we have observed is this m 
is depends on epsilon as well as x and your limit function is not continuous at x is equal to 1 okay so there is a two types of point wise conversions we have seen in that a limit function is continuous or i can say that m which we got it depends on epsilon as well as x and some of the examples are there which depends only on epsilon so here i am giving you couple of examples to find out what is the point wise limit no need to go with that epsilon delta definition you just need to give me answer what will be the limit of that function and that things i i think so it is easy to calculate so the question is questions are find the limits of following sequence of functions in given domain so let us write the examples the first one is the sequence nx upon 1 plus nx the domain is x is greater than or equal to 0 the second nx upon 1 plus n square x here is also x is greater than or equal to 0 third example 1 upon nx plus 1 here is also x is greater than or equal to 0 let us try to find out a limit of this function. Solution. I will solve first two. The third one. I will give you as an exercise to you to solve. So here the question is to calculate only limit of the function that is nx upon 1 plus nx is your sequence of function is there. You just take the limit both sides means take the limit of this and if you divide this by n then this is limit n tends to infinity x upon 1 by x 1 by n plus x. This is equal to limit n tends to infinity sorry. If I take the limit here, then it is x upon x. If x is not equal to 0, because we can write down in the denominator only x if it is not equal to 0. It is 1. Okay. So what you can say, if your x is between the domain of the function is this, x is greater than or equal to 0. So if it is between this two, then it is this. And if x is equal to 0, then the function fnx, which is nx upon 1 plus nx, is already 0. Because x is 0, then this will be 0. In that case, it will converge to 0. So what is the limit of this function? The limit of n times to infinity, nx upon 1 plus nx is 1 if it is between these two is 0 if it is 0. So this is the limit of the function. So this way you can calculate the limit of the, any function. Let's say the third example. Sorry, second example. The second example was limit n times infinity. It was nx upon 1 plus n square x. Since the denominator is n square, I will divide numerator and denominator by n square that is limit n tends to infinity your x upon n is there 1 by n square plus x so this is x upon n as n tends to infinity 0 upon 0 plus x provided if x is not equal to 0 here is also domain is x is greater than or equal to 0 so i am just separating that 0 case so this limit is 0 if your x is between 0 to infinity and what will happen at, at x is equal to 0 so if x is equal to 0 then your sequence of function that is fn of x it is nx upon 
1 plus n square x. If you put x is equal to 0, this will be 0. So therefore, a limit of this function, nx upon 1 plus n square x, is 0 for any x between 0 to infinity. Or x is greater than all those. So for here it is a continuous function. That is a zero function you will have. You may try for the third example. That is this. 1 by 1 upon x. You can try for yourself and try to find out what is the limit of this function. For you I can also use, I can add one example here. That is e power minus n x. For x is... Uh, let's say belongs to r what will happen to this try to find okay try to find out what is the limit of this function three and four i'm giving you as a homework to do it now here what we can say i want to write down some remarks here we what we have observed in the previous examples which we have discussed that when you have a function sequence of function which converts to some function and then each of these are continuous but in some case this sequence of function will not converge to a continuous function but in some case, it will converge to a continuous function. For example, in this case, it is a continuous function because it is a constant function. In above example, it is a discontinuous function. Okay, so in that case, we need to looking at the situation or what we require, the idea of preservation of continuity in the limit function. So we are just concentrating on what is the idea of preservation of continuity in the limit of function. So in the limit function, what is the idea? That means each of fn's are continuous. So let us consider this fn. Let a sequence be a sequence of continuous function. And this is converse to, and I want that this has to be converse to. A function x. So what should be the idea for that this limit function is also continuous, which I require, which I want. That means for f to be continuous, what I require is f to be continuous, we need a limit of y tends to x fy is equal to fx if it is defined on e then for every x this has to be there so i can write down this sequence of continuous defined on e then for every e this has to so for every x this has to be there because it is a continuity we are talking about and for the continuity of f at every point, so hence, for f to be continuous, we need this thing, a limit of y tends to x, a limit of n tends to infinity f and x because this is your function f and that is equal to limit of n tends to infinity f n of x 
this is I can say y. Okay. So it, when you have f n of y, you take the limit, then and if you take another again, you will have a limit, then it will be f n of x and tends to infinity. So ultimately, this is the things that you can write down: limit n tends to infinity. Limit n tends to infinity. Sorry, x tends to y tends to x. F n x. F n y. So y when y tends to infinity, if this each of f n s are continuous, right? That then you can take this x. And f n of x is f n. And limit n tends to infinity. It is f x. So this is actually equal to f x. So ultimately, if you want that this f to be continuous, then you can able to change this order of limit. And probably when you have functions of two variable, we have learned. Into the advanced calculus subject, we have learned that you cannot interchange these limits as per your conveniency. Okay. So the question is, under which situation we can able to convert these limits? In which situation we can able to convert these limits? So in general, we cannot take this interchange these limits. So, in whatever the situation we can interchange these limits, that is, limit of this and limit of this. In that situation, your function or limit function is continuous. Otherwise, it will not. Okay. So, in in other words, what we can write as a remark now, in other words, for continuity. of the function we are asking for the limit taking in process in one if i call this equation process in one to be independent Of the order of which it has to be taken, to be independent of the order in which it is taken. Okay. So let us have such example. Let us consider this example. Define f n of x is one upon one plus n x. If your x is greater than or equal to zero. Okay. Now we know that you can calculate the limit of this function, and one can note that it is not continuous at zero, which is easy to see. If you if don't, you can just try. But our objective is to show that this you cannot interchange. So now, what we'll do is take the limit n tends to infinity and limit x tends to zero plus. Why? Because this is defined only for x which are greater than or equal to zero. So that's why I'm taking the right hand limit. F n of x. This is equal to limit n tends to infinity. A limit x tends to zero plus one upon one plus n x. When I put x as limit x tends to zero here, then this is limit n tends to infinity. This is one upon one plus zero, and that will give you one so one. But on the other side, limit X tends to zero plus limit n tends to infinity. F n of x 
is equal to limit x tends to 0 the limit n tends to infinity 1 upon 1 plus nx is there and if I put this limit n tends to infinity then you know that there is 1 upon n so I can just divide by n both sides so this limit n tends to infinity 1 upon n upon 1 upon n plus x so this will tends to 0 so this is limit x tends to 0 and that is it. So in this case, it is the answer is 1. In this case, the answer is 0. So hence, we can say that limit n tends to infinity, limit x tends to 0 plus fn of x is not equal to limit x tends to 0 plus limit n tends to infinity fn of x. Okay, so if you want that the limit function is continuous, this limit has to be interchanged and you can say that. The same question, here I have asked the question for continuity, whether the fn of x converts to f, if each of fn's are continuous, whether the f is continuous. The another question one can ask is, is each of fn's are differentiable or integrable whether the f is integrable each of fn's are integrable can we say that f is integrable each of fn's are differentiable can we say that f is differentiable under the pointwise conversions so these are the interesting question one can ask so here i have just discussed an example or continuity. There are certain examples which having this property about the continuity we have discussed. What will happen if it is integrable function? Each fn's are integrable. Can we have a limit will be integrable? Each fn's are differentiable. Then one can ask the question if f is the integrable or differentiable. Each fn's are differentiable, and can we say that f is differentiable? Th that answer is already in front of you because uh, in above all the examples, our functions are either polynomial or rational functions. So in that, you know that each of them are continuous. So it is continuous since it are polynomial function, then it is differentiable. A limit which is discontinuous, discontinuous is there. So it is not differentiable that we can see but the question is under which situation we can have so this interesting question it leads to a very interesting analysis and we will discuss that analysis in the next lecture okay if you have any question you can ask